This video will not only show you the various approaches to creating a project in CSV to post, but I will explain some of the, the complexities behind the, the different options available when working with multiple CSV files. So what I'm going to do is begin with creating the, the average project where we have a single CSV file and therefore require a single database table as CSV to post creates a database table for the, the data being imported to before creating posts. Now I'm just going to scroll down. What I'm actually going to do is enter all of the files that I'm working with. It's three files. They are available to download from Google Documents as they are public. But I'm going to select single file which tells CSV to post that I only want to work with one file. Obviously you wouldn't enter three different files as I've done up here if you're only using a single file, but I, I want to demonstrate how the plugin behaves in certain situations and so on. Now in this situation I can add an ID column if I want to do any sort of updating I need to tell the plugin what values in the data can create a relationship between a new CSV file and data already imported to the WordPress database or the, the project table that CSV to post creates. So I'm going to click submit without adding ID column just to see what happens. Table exists already, right, so I've forgotten to delete the tables that I was working with earlier, testing. I'll just quickly drop them. I'm working in MySQL Workbench, which is free. So I've just dropped those tables and I'll hit F5 and resubmit that form. And here we have table created and the plugin CSV to post always uses the, the first file as a parent or main file when creating the, the database table, if creating one database table. And the plugin has not only created that table, but it is, a war it is warning us that we cannot do updating. The updating is not ready because we never entered an ID column. So friendly little warning there. Um, project created, down here the project has been added to the, the list of many possible projects. I should, I should point out this is in the premium edition. The, the free edition will be simplified and everything I say can't, can't really be applied. Now we have a, a project ID here and what I'm going to do is go to MySQL Workbench, refresh. Here we see the new table. If I just select that table, you will see that I have a few columns. I think there's around 11 there. ID to condition. So the last column is named condition. And what I just want to do is, is confirm that the, the data I'm working with is exactly the same. This is the, the spreadsheet. First column is ID and the last is called condition. Right. Now, we'll go into the more complex approaches that involve working with multiple CSV files. If that doesn't apply to you and you're only working with a single CSV file, you need not continue to watch because everything from here on only applies to, to those situations and I've already shown you exactly how to get started with your single file. There are various videos showing all other aspects of the plugin including the actual data import and post creation etc. So that's what you want to, to look for from here on if, that apply, if that's your situation. Now if you're working with two or more files please keep watching. I am working with three files and I want to join my columns let's say. Actually, no, I need to go. Reminder there, I'll just dismiss that. Um, where was I? So three CSV files and join column and I will click submit, even though it requires an ID column. I just want to show the plugin will take care of that and, and remind you, your data Treatment requires an ID column to be entered. The column should exist in all of your files and hold the exact same values. This is used to ensure the correct rows from, from each file are joined. Right, so our relationship is created through your ID column. I'll enter the ID column, click submit. And we have a new table. Again, same table name from the main file that I'm using. Project created and project added to the list. Now, I, I'm going to go to the database, refresh, open the new table. You'll notice we have the first few 
columns as we did earlier. However, if I keep on scrolling, you'll find a lot more columns. And the last one is YouTube. So let me go over to Google Chrome and Google Documents, go to the third file, and you'll see that the last file, sorry, the third file's last column is named YouTube. What's essentially happened is CSV Post has taken the headers from three files and used them to create a single database table. And therefore, the data import from each file will come into and import into this single table. When we're finished, we have a single complete data set to use from there on. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and delete that project. I hope I'm not moving around too quick. So that's, actually I don't need to delete the project, I just need to delete the, the tables. So drop that table. And go back to the, the new project panel. And what I want to do now is append rows. I can't use the same files. I'll try, actually, just to demonstrate, submit. Headers don't match. File 2 does not have the exact same headers as your first main file. To use the append data achievement, all .csv files must have the same headers. And that's because the the rows in each file is, are simply imported to the same database table. It's probably a little more natural thinking and it sounds a lot more natural other than, you know, as opposed to creating a, a, an extended table with more columns and so on. The, there will be many situations where someone, a company, may have additional CSV files and simply want to import them to the existing table without adding new columns. And that would be where you use append rows. Now, don't worry about that because I have an example file. I think I just I just set them up. I've not actually used these files before, so that's brave when creating out a video. Uh, append test.csv. And that's in the test folder. Test folder append test and that would be one. And then two and three. So let's imagine I want to append each of these files rows to an existing table or for example the second file and the third file are created after the project exists and we want to add them later. So that would be the sort of scenario. Click submit. So table created again and I'm just going to go to the database and show you. Refresh all. Select rows and it's a rather small file. There's only four columns. My ID, the title, the description, adopt by meta value. All right, they don't really mean anything. And if I just open the files, I'll be able to show you what is happening. So that's the first file, second file, and third file. Now, obviously, the data, the, the values themselves, are are the same. Um, that's because I've not really done a lot of testing with this approach yet. What I would what I would do if I was going into deeper testing is change that to four, that to five, and that to six. All right, so same with this: four, five, and six. Probably shouldn't be doing this during this tutorial, but never mind. Um, so four, five, and six, and then um, seven, eight, and nine. Okay. And hopefully by the time I've done that, you get the point. All three files are really, the idea is that they're holding different records and they will all be imported to this to, oh, this table here. And we would end up with nine rows in this table. All right, I hope that makes sense. Okay, I know I know. sometimes I do things on the fly, um, but sometimes, sometimes you have to. Um, so that's that approach. What's the last approach? The last one is individual tables. Let me clean up a little bit. Uh, we need to go back to the the files we were using before for that to you know to make it to make sense and make sure I select the correct ones. There we go. Individual tables, and we need an ID column for individual tables because there has to be a relationship between the the rows in each table. I think that's that. 
Um, let me just double check I've deleted the table. Yep. Okay, click submit. Table created, and in this case, we have in this example, we do have three separate file, uh, separate tables. So that's what that that option does. It creates a, a table per CSV file. It's very rare that anybody would want to do that, but I have had a, a very big client who needed to do that, and that's absolutely fine. You know, that's why I'm here. And there is a maximum of five files, but if you require far more on this screen, on this form, then that's easily done, it's easily added, so that they can all become a single project. However, I'm exploring the idea of adding new data sources and adding new tables to an existing project. So if that's something that you that you feel that you need now, after you, you know possibly you've been using this version eight for a while already, by the time you watch this and you need that, then just let me know. If I've not added it yet, then I'll, I'll just get right onto it if you need it. So I think that's that. Um, other than just quickly showing you the, the tables, I suppose, let me refresh the database. So here we have the first file. Uh, the first table based on based on the first file it reflects the the first CSV file. There's the second one, last column liquid cooled. You see, and the third one has description columns, operating system description, and graphic description. Then it has some image columns, and then the YouTube column. And I'll just go over to Chrome again, Google Documents, and show you those. You've seen the first file plenty. I'll just go to the second one that has the computer specifications. So last last column, liquid cooled and in here you've got your descriptions and image columns and so on. So basically we have three tables reflecting these files here that I hope we'll all be working with and therefore on the same page so to speak. Uh, we'll have more of a chaining effect that way. These files may change moderately over time so, so be aware of that when you're sort of testing with them and expecting this and that to happen. Uh, and that's that I think, I think I've covered everything, the creation of all these various approaches um, and the fact that most of you will only need the, the one file and most of what I've said in this video will probably never be watched but for those of you <laughs> for those of you that, that need all that complex stuff if this isn't enough then I totally understand it's not it's not natural to understand all this straight away especially without listening to a Scotsman who speaks uh, as fast as I do alright, I'm happy to type all this up in more detail, screenshots, maybe another video that, uh, and I could try speaking slower. So just ask me, just let me know. Alright, get a hold of me at Web Tech Global. My name is Ryan Bain. Thank you very much for watching.